Today's video, we're going to be checking out the new DC Collectibles DC Designer Series Trinity by artist Jason Fabic. The classic trio of Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman are brought together by Jason Fabic in this heroic and iconic three-figure statue, which is based on the variant cover for Trinity number one. DC Designer Series statues are based on art from the comic industry's top creators and recreate their vision in vivid 3D detail. going to go ahead and get this measured off. I'm actually going to keep the statue on its turntable just solely because it's the easiest to have a look at the statue because there are so many different component pieces to it. Let's grab the tape measure and figure out how tall the statue stands and I guess the best way to do that we're going to take it right to the top of Superman's cape because that is technically higher than his head. So taking it right to the top of the cape. There we go. The statue stands at a very impressive 15.6 inches, or in centimeters, you'd be looking at 39.7, just a little short of 40 centimeters. As mentioned at the beginning of this review, the statue depicts the three trinities, well, the trinity of three superheroes, that being Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman atop there. Now, speaking of atop, you can see that they are atop of a stone kind of rock facing and they are in various stances. Um, one thing though that I want to stress and that's the reasoning I didn't take these apart because I really don't want to fiddle with putting them together, taking them off, putting them on, taking them off, putting them on because I do feel that I may damage the peg points here. Um, one thing I do want to show you though is when you are putting this together it may be of your best interest to put Batman in first or Wonder Woman in first. I would probably even put Wonder Woman in first because I'll show you where the character points are for her. Then put Batman in and then finally put Superman in. And the reasoning why you want to put Superman in last is because Batman's cape and Wonder Woman's cape almost overlap and touch, almost touch one another. It's very hard to get those in place when you've got Superman already there. So you may want to actually add Superman as the last thing you want to add to get everything put together here. Two of the heroes, Batman and Wonder Woman, are connected in two connector points. She has a peg that attaches here and then she has a main footprint right here. Batman attaches here with his main footprint. And I, when I say main footprint, it's basically like a little square socketed area. And then there's a peg hole right there, followed by a peg right there as well. So that's why you may want to add her first, then add Batman on this side, 
and then finally add Superman. Superman is only really connected by this one long post. So he's almost the easiest to, to put in. He's also one of the trickiest to get out because you almost have to twist the pole to get it pulled back out of the rock facing. Again, this is not something that I would want to do a whole lot of. Once this is all kind of perfectly in place, I'm more inclined to just kind of leave it alone. So that's one of the reasonings why normally when I have a look at the DC collectible statues, I'm inclined to show you guys the display base and then show you how everything is attached together. Here, because there are so many like layerings and you have to put one in, in first and one then in second, uh, it just was a lot easier for me to kind of keep everything together. While we are down here, why don't we have a look at the rock face that the three figures or three characters are standing atop of. It's a really neat detailed base, not a whole lot of color though. It's mostly a cream color and with slight darker shades, almost like an orangey creamsicle color that's made up of the little small caverned areas of the rocks. Um, it's got a lot of detail to it for the fact that it doesn't sadly have any other color to break it up. I would have also really liked this base being done in almost a gray color too, but I can understand why they went so light. Obviously, they're going to pair it to the comic, but also it contrasts well to the dark colors of Batman, who is already gray. All three depictions of the heroes are absolutely gorgeous. I think my favorite, though, of the three is probably Batman then Wonder Woman, then Superman. And it's nothing really against Superman necessarily. I just think the other two have better head sculpts. Batman looks absolutely perfect. I don't think I would have done anything different to him. I like that they've added a little bit of dark gray around the areas, just where it looks like he could have developed a little bit of stubble. He's more in his new costume, so you can see that he's got the gold outlining there around his bat emblem. And also something that's present on this Batman is he's got the purple interior of the cape here. It is a really great looking head sculpt though. I love the coloring that they've added to it. There's a little bit of darker coloring that they've put around his eye area so it's not quite the same blue as the rest of his face. Of course, he's got the shorter ears here on this cowl. Really, really overall happy with his head sculpt. Of course, completely omitted from this Batman is the underroos, the lower trunk areas, instead favoring all gray. It's a really nice dark gray, too, that they've given him around the areas of the musculature, like the sides of his abdomen, and even like the front area here, they've added a slightly darker shade of gray. Lighter here on the areas of the bicep, the areas around the shoulder area and around the areas of pectoral muscles, but mostly really, really dark, and it works well for Batman here. Down below you also get the same continuation of the black and gold as you get the gold outlining here around the more simplified stylized utility belt the new Batman costume will have. Of course, one other thing Batman does have is a small Batarang, which I could probably tell you, I sure don't have to tell you, is extremely fragile. A lot of the uh, details have been heavily, heavily packed when you get these out of the box. There's foam actually in between the torso and the cape, and there's a whole lot of uh, additional padding here, a lot of foam in between the areas around the Batarang, because this is one thing that will definitely break off. It's got some nice detailing, though, to it. Almost got a scratched away, exposed area of the silver around the Batarang. It does look like it's something that's been aged. And speaking of aging, also you've got Batman's armored gauntlets here on the side that also get a little bit of that additional silver there. It's really nice looking. Personally, I really like the new Batman costume. It's simplistic. It's not as armored up as the new 52 uh, Batman armor, which I wasn't really a big fan of here. It's kind of more traditional, less armor more traditional colors, but the dark gray works really, really well. And then you've got, again, the interior of the purple, which I happen to really like on the new Batman costume that he's got the purple on the interior there. I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up, but it's got some nice dark colors here, just around these side areas of the flaps or where the cape has started to kind of fold in on itself. It's got some nice dark purple happening there as well. Now let's focus our attention on Wonder Woman here is on the side. Now Trinity's Wonder Woman also sports a cape, but the rest of the costume definitely takes some cues from the Wonder Woman film. You can see again that incorporating of the skirt, which is something the Gal Gadot costume has. Even like the boots also are very similar in design as well. 
The head sculpt of Wonder Woman is extremely attractive. I like the narrow face that they've given her. She's got dark, dark cranberry lips, and the eyes are done exceptionally well. I like how they've also drawn in or colored in the side there, giving her the indication of very broad, very full lashes. Um, the tiara at the top there carries over some of that gold that we're going to look at for the rest of her costume. I like the nice flowing hairstyle that they've given her, which cascades off to the side of her shoulder here. Much like how Batman has a Batarang, uh, Wonder Woman here has her Lasso of Truth. Now, the Lasso of Truth is not sculpted. Instead, they used a, a cording, a threading, a gold thread. And it actually, it's better that they went that route for safer reasons. If this had been simply just sculpted in, pulling this even out of the box as is would likely have broken this. This also gives a little bit of extra differencing in material. So it's again, it's not just the same uh, material used for the rest of the statue. I like that it does have a natural flow to it. It doesn't really look as if she's necessarily about to throw it. Instead, she's sort of just gripping it around her hand here. Obviously different in color, but still she gets as much of the dark shading as Batman has. Here we have the dark coloring of her bodice area, but has a nice metallic gold happening on the top eagle portion and the lower W area of her belt. I like the dark shading that they've added here around the the bodice area and that same shading also makes appearances here around the cape as well which you can see the inner flapped areas the areas of the cape again that are flowing they've got dark coloring happening in there as well i love the design of batman but i also really like the design of wonder woman she's beautiful the coloring and the choice of skin tone that they actually gave both batman and wonder woman are warm they're not overly cold and they are slightly different from one another. You'll see that Batman has a slightly more off coloring to the warmer flesh tone there of Wonder Woman on the right. Then hovering above both the heroes is the Man of Steel Superman, again in his more updated costume. Omitted are the underroos, the lower trunked areas, instead favoring all blue, except for the breakup in which you've got the metallic red happening there in the belt, as well as the red in the cape and his logo. Again, I have to admit, I'm not as big of a fan as Superman's head sculpt as I am with Batman and Wonder Woman's. Both of those are absolutely gorgeous. Superman's is good, but it's not as... It, it's missing something, and I'm not quite sure really what it is. Maybe it's the clenched, almost grimaced face that they've given him here. To the credit, though, of DC Collectibles, they've added a whole lot of shading around the muscle areas of his neck, and of course in his face as well. I mean, honestly, it's not a bad looking head sculpt, but I feel there's something missing on it or something that seems off. Maybe it is the mouth that's curled down, which is really pulled from the artwork source material. So I can't necessarily think that this it was creative decisions on DC's part to sculpt Superman's mouth like this. They're obviously taking it from the source material, but maybe it's the mouth that's throwing it off for me. I like the face, I like the eyes, I like the sculpting of the hair, but the curled down mouth sort of detracts a little bit from Superman's face. One touch I like though is that they've raised and elevated the Superman emblem, and instead of giving traditional reds and yellows, they've gone instead metallic reds and metallic almost gold colors. It looks really nice, and I like that it is raised from the rest of his outfit. Also really digging the flow of Superman's cape, how it is blowing off to the side. It is paired with Wonder Woman's, who also happens to have her cape blowing to the side. Batman's is the only one that's draping down along his torso. I really like the sculpting that they have added to Superman's cape. And as you could probably guess it, it's a little bit on the more fragile side. But rest assured, when DC Collectibles packs these things, they put a whole lot of foam between his torso and the cape. And they also put it around the cape as well. So... When I get it, when I got it out of the box, luckily there was nothing that was broken for it. But I was very careful when I was putting it into the base because I definitely didn't want to break any of the capes on the heroes here. I really like this statue. It brings my three favorite DC characters together as the Holy Trinity depicted here in one statue. And you know, talking about one statue, any one of these characters depicted by these beautiful sculpts from DC Collectibles could easily have served as standalone statue pieces and I would have picked them up. The Batman and the Wonder Woman are that good that if they were sold separately, I would have quite quickly picked them up. Again, the only one that misses a mark slightly is the Man of Steel. 
Now, I know that DC Collectibles pulled it from the source material, the Trinity Number no. 1 variant cover by artist Jason Fabek, but I do feel like the head sculpt on Superman is slightly off. It's certainly not as strong as the Cape Crusader or the Amazonian Princess, but collectively, I, again, bringing those three characters together in one statue, you get the benefit of having three great-looking sculpts, two better than the one, but you still get gr three beautiful sculpts brought together in a fantastic-looking statue. If you guys are interested in picking up the DC Designer Series Trinity Statue by Jason Fabek, luckily for you, this is now currently available in comic book stores. Say off chance you go into your store and the person working there doesn't have it available, they'd be more than inclined to order it in for you. And I would definitely say if you're a big fan of these three characters, or even any one of these characters on their own, this is a statue you definitely would want to add to your collection. Today, like I said, we were having a look at the DC Collectibles DC Designer Series. This was the Trinity Variant Number 1 by Jason Fabok, and of course produced by DC Collectibles. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other DC Collectible statue reviews, there's a playlist for you. It'll have all the stuff that I've done up to this point, and all future videos will also be found in that same playlist. If you're also new to this channel, and you haven't had a chance yet to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you hit it, because then it'll guarantee you that new videos come to this channel you'll never miss out. And speaking of missing out, if for some chance you feel as if you might have missed out on something I may have recently posted, the easy workaround to that is make sure you head over to the home page and check out the videos section there. Check out all the playlists, all the thumbnails also on that home videos, the home page videos section, and you'll know right off the bat if there's anything you may have missed along the way. We're going to have a look at some more DC collectible statue reviews in the coming days, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.